Okay, everyone, this is Aaron with Summerboard here, and I thought I'd share a few of the secrets that we have in editing our videos, which is really even more than half the battle of getting a great shot. You can get an awesome shot, and then you see this a lot with not just our company, with other, you know, even traditional skateboard companies. You know, the best riders don't always get the best shots. But the best shots is what people share and love and uh, inspire each and every one of them to get better. And so that's what we're going to focus on today is how to get that great shot. And so I'm starting here with kind of a complicated shot that we did that um, will show you how editing can really make a big difference. Now, the first thing um, you're doing as I, as I uh, move around here, you'll notice this is obviously a 360 camera shot with Insta360. Uh, best software that I've come across, which with uh, cameras, especially 360 cameras, the software piece of it is probably even more important than the camera itself, uh, because this is how you create something awesome, not just getting that shot. And it's just super easy to use. So you'll notice that um, we've got the shot here, and if you just play it, you know, it's, it's just going to run through and you know, this might be cool to to share, you know, it's pointing in the, in the forward direction, but let's make it a lot better. So let's go back to the to the front here. And we're going to what we're going to do is always keep the rider in the middle of the shot. Um, and, you know, sometimes you can if you're passing by other objects and you can kind of get close to them for speed um, recognition kind of as you're watching it. Things flying by you can help uh, show speed. So we'll do some of that here too. But we've got some movement with the camera. So you'll notice that um, I'm shooting here. You can't see the stick obviously, but I'm the stick is the camera's really far away from me. We're using uh, the extended selfie stick, which is really great for follow cams. And so I'm starting it off really high so that when I pass by this this little bridge thing, you know, we kind of get a piece of that that uh, that speed, and it's almost like a drone shot. And in fact, this is really even better than a drone shot because you can control it a lot easier, get a lot closer to objects, and uh, have a lot more control, and still have that kind of flying effect. So what we're going to do first um, in keeping our rider in the shot, we're going to hold down on the uh, on the screen here, and you see we get three options: viewfinder. Smart Track and Pivot Point. Now, to just quickly explain these, the viewfinder is uh, this this crazy uh, system of kind of pointing the 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 phone or the iPad or whatever you're editing on, kind of at what you want to see, and it's a really cool effect. You can you can search about it, but the thing that I don't like about it, and we'll touch on later, is that it just adds too many keyframe points and. Uh, which you don't want to have, and you'll and you'll see as we go through this. Uh, you want the shot to be smooth, and doing the viewfinder is is kind of fun, but it doesn't make the smoothest uh, edited shot as you get through. Now the smart track is a similar thing. You can and and we'll just do this because you can see more on the screen. So we've selected uh, Chris here, and if you click smart track, it'll try to track them. But see how how jumpy and jerky that is. That's because the same thing. It's it's just trying to uh, follow them, but it's creating way too many keyframes. And again, we'll we'll get to why that's important here. So we'll go and throw that away. And so what we have to do, and it's a lot more work, but it makes an amazing shot, and you have full control over your shots, is the pivot points. So here, um, as we approach this, we're going to keep Chris and that uh, that bridge in intact because we don't want that bridge to come out of nowhere uh, but we're going to keep it kind of on the edge of the frame it's just like okay the audience sees that coming and then as they blow by it it's got that awesome effect so we throw a keyframe here now we're going to scroll a little bit forward and I usually go in one to two second intervals and we'll just throw another keyframe here now even though the camera was, I'm trying to get that bridge right at the top of the, the frame there. Um, there we go. So uh, even though the uh, in the original uh, shot it was kind of pointed there, we want to still keep that keep that control again um, and, and put that keyframe exactly where we want it. So I'm going you know, another second here and I'll keep that bridge now just kind of 
you have to kind of poke around the screen a little bit to get you exactly there you go all right so then I'll go another second forward and we'll keep that bridge a little bit in the shot and then as we get lower we'll zoom in on Chris so we we'll get that nice drone effect and then now we're getting lower to Chris we'll put him right in the middle of the shot and now we can kind of see out the left window here it's a really cool effect he's sliding and then now down here now if you look at the timeline at the bottom you can see a lot of keyframes now this might be too many uh, it's about a keyframe per second and you'll see uh, let's, let's take a look at our work here so as we're going through there we go we go right by that and it's good now you might have noticed there was a little bit of jerk at the end there right as we were going over this keyframe so let's watch that again and it kind of jerks there so how do we fix that well let's just go ahead and delete that keyframe and now let's take a look at how that how that how smooth that is see how it got rid of that jerk this is exactly why you don't put too many keyframes so if you notice that you've kind of gone through your editing and it's seeing a little jerky and that's really a notification that you just over keyframed that shot and so what you can do is just delete the keyframes in the middle and sometimes there's too much movement um, so that things start to get out of whack and you have to move the keyframes around but we just as you can see deleted another one let's see how this shot looks see how smooth that is that's a really good shot and so now I typically whenever I'm uh, out in the field I want to get something out uh, really fast uh, you know posting a story as we're out riding um, I'll just go through and just you know kind of quick and dirty skim through just two seconds and just throw these keyframes in and so here you know we're standing uh, Chris is going more or less straight because we're in this narrow hallway so that's super helpful but now you'll notice in this next shot I kind of get to the side of him a little bit so we kind of want to look to the side and then at the end we come back center now one thing as you're keyframing motion that you want to keep in mind is whenever you're you're changing those perspectives you want to keyframe right at the the change and so you'll notice here that change it looks like we want to move over here so maybe around the 14 second mark okay so right before that you is say we didn't have this keyframe here and we went straight to this 14 second okay put that now there's a lot of space here and that movement happens so as you go forward you see how it kind of turned before we were ready to and so this is what I mean by kind of keyframing around the, the start and end of that movement you want to be cognizant of that so so here we notice he starts to shift over but we don't want to start that movement until maybe here. And so we're going to throw a keyframe there. And then that's just going to be automated right there. And so now we want to come back to, to the center point here. And so this movement just happens to be fast enough that I think this last keyframe is going to be okay. But let's go ahead and put that here again. And now it's picking up to where I edited it before. So let's look one more time at our work and see how smooth this got. Now it's going to change as it goes to the side here. And so now that was a little too, uh, you know, jerked back for me personally. Um, you notice that the camera, boom, right there, it kind of, that might be a kind of a cool effect um, and the the shot is so short so maybe what we can do to make that a little bit less uh, jerky is to not point the camera so far over so we'll re-keyframe it a little bit ahead of him so now that smooth that out a little bit but now that I see that I kind of like that uh, that camera movement so we'll go ahead and put that back here take a look and you see how fine-tuning this shot really makes a huge difference on how it ends up looking. And so really to, to summarize, you don't want to have too many keyframes. You always want to use uh, the pivot points. 
you know you don't want to use any other of the the automated features because it just gets jerky and uh, you definitely want to always keep you know your subject in frame because here we're in 16 by 9 wide but say for uh, an Instagram feed post you really want to be square and so you see if we move that over to say one by one wide we don't have to re-edit this shot it still looks really good because we kept everything center uh, sometimes you know depending on the shot and the movement that's just impossible to avoid you know you really have to reshoot it um, or sorry re-edit it rather uh, for a wide or for a square but this will get you a lot smoother shots and um, and really be a lot better for you know whatever you're doing which if you're just trying to impress your friends or uh, gain followers or whatever uh, it's going to make these really awesome inspirational shots with your uh, Insta360 cam. So if you have any questions hit us up in the comment or support at summerwood.com we're always uh, open to share our secrets of shooting and editing and we'll follow up with even more uh, tips and stories. So thanks everyone take care.